good morning. <clears throat> oh, I haven't really spoken today. <clears throat> now I'm realizing I've got a frog in my throat. Good morning, good morning. How's everybody? I hope everyone is well. I'm doing just fine and I hope you are. Let me get to our... Oh, let me get to my Facebook. Okay, there we are. Okay, so. For the past two weeks, we've been working on this little goodie here, and it's a mixed media piece. And we've been building it together. And I've let you guys contribute, you know, input, um, help me make decisions. I invited you to be part of my thought process as I did this piece. And there's a couple things I want to say before we get going again, because this I want to get it finished today. I did a lot of work on it over the week because I didn't want this to go into possibly a fourth week. <laughs> and I thought I would get it all but finished tell you what I did, and then we can take it from there. There is still something that needs to be done, and I want to see if you guys can sort of figure out what needs to be done, and we'll have a conversation about it. Um, I, uh, I was just looking at my watch. I hope it's on silent. Sorry. I, uh, hi Carol, how are you? Good morning. Um, I've always said that if you're going to do a piece of work, you should have intent. You should have some idea what this is going to be for, where it's going to go, what's going to happen with it. That way you can at least meet those, meet that criteria, whatever that is. And my only intent with this piece from the get-go was to do it with you guys, have conversations about what it needed, conversations about um, what should be done with it, conversations about why we do what we do, why I do what I do. Um, and this is all about sort of getting a 3D look using, uh, you know, scraps like this. Just I just use things like this and cut out some flowers and things. Let's see who's there. Oh, Deb Jones. Hi. How are you? Oh, I'm getting a message from Facebook that's blocking you guys. There we go. I can see you now. So this is about cutting up scrap paper, like this little piece right here. Some of these. Um, also about using tissue paper for tissue paper collage, which we did here. And I don't, I don't know if you remember, but this was two pieces of tissue paper. One was white and had paint splatters on it. And the other was sort of a, uh, it was a color, it was a paper that I sort of tie-dyed. And I don't know if I have a piece here. I have a similar piece. It's kind of like this, sort of a tie-dyed piece. Not quite this bright, more, more mellow, but yeah. Oh, good. You're great. I'm glad. I'm glad. Thank you for joining me today, those of you that are here. Appreciate your time, and um, I'm excited that you're here with me. The reason now you might notice from last week to this, this thing sort of got uh, detailed. It got a whole lot more detailed than, uh, like I said, I didn't really have an intent, so it's okay that it got detailed. Now, if I had wanted it to be loose and and carefree and just whatever, I would have missed that mark. I would have been disappointed because I would not have met my intent. But it's okay that it tightened up and got detailed. And you know you know why it got tightened up and got detailed? The minute I made this jar like this and put ball on, it got detailed. So I didn't feel I could have a jar this detailed, even though it's not actually, it's not even straight. But I didn't feel I could have this and then have a bunch of loose, crazy flowers. 
it sort of it all needed to be loose or it all needed to be tight and I really didn't want to get rid of the ball jar I kind of liked it so and that's because I have an affinity for ball jars so I decided to go ahead and even though these are whimsical flowers they're make-believe and they're whimsical I decided to go ahead and go with it and so I did detail on these and you'll notice I took my oh, let me find my pen It's over here somewhere. Here it is. I used a Posca pen. One of the smaller ones. This is a PC-1M. It's, um, it's not the smallest one they make, but it's, it's a very fine tip. It's a, it's a V-shape. It's like a bullet, but it's got a little point to it. It's not a round bullet. Um, and... The thing I like about this pen used to be a problem with these pens for me. When I used to do designs on pumpkin plastic or foam craft pumpkins, um, if you pull this pen a certain way, like against, like if I don't lean the pen towards myself and go easily, you know, over things, if I push against the bumps and things, it'll splat. And you see these, these places where there's little splats that's this pen doing that when I push push against the grain. This actually has a grain because I have brush marks on there from the stuff I put on it. So I like this splat, this random thing. So I went over the whole thing and outlined everything with the black pen to give it this contrast. I really like the contrast. Um, and I don't know if you remember, but this and this flower are fabric. And I took some paint and reinforced those colors. Um, this is cut paper, some paper that I designed. This was a piece of white tissue paper that I drew. Uh, no, I used the Posca for that. On white tissue paper, I drew this flower and these yellow ones, and then I collaged them on. And that was a neat thing, because the, the, the thing that we discussed was when you do Posca on something, and then if you take, for instance, maybe this varnish, you want to seal it, it smears the Posca. It breaks it down somehow, even though the Posca is acrylic, and this is a this is an acrylic medium varnish, it still breaks it down. So, what I, and I'm just reviewing real quick, in case anybody missed the last one, um, this is my top secret collage stuff here that I make myself and and um it is very shh, don't tell anybody I'll, I'll tell you guys what it is but don't don't you tell anybody okay it's it's glue and water <laughs> that's my top secret combo and I've had some people come to me and say how do you make that stuff what is the glue and water thing I'm going to show you because I, I need to make more so you buy Elmer's school glue Okay, and I just invert the bottle. I actually make it fit down in the jar, and I just leave it a while. I'll give it a squeeze and help it along there. But just leave that. Oh, you're welcome. Carol says it became richer. Poo, that makes sense. Okay, thanks for the recap. You're welcome. Thanks for listening. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave this in here while I do the demo, and it's going to add to it. When I get ready to use it, I'll add some clean water stir it around and that's that's how we make the the uh, top secret glue and water stuff okay so I'm gonna let that continue to drip while we get to work here so uh, I've got five people in here and my question to you is now everything is essentially done except for one thing and it's something that I wasn't anticipating having to do because I didn't know it would get this detailed. So can you, can any of you look at this and decide what component still needs to be addressed? I'm just wanting to see, I'm just wanting to pick your brain a little bit, make it interesting. Um, I'm going to let you guys tell me what it needs and then I'm going to show you how to go about putting that in. 
So everybody's thinking, this is a trick question. No, it's not a trick question. There really is something that still has to be done. I'll bring it a little closer. I'll do sort of a, a drive by here. <laughs> I'll bring it closer and move it back and forth so you can try to hopefully see it in detail, a little closer anyway. Okay. More shadows? Ah, uh, Carol says more shadows. I don't need any more cast shad like I've got I've cast shadows like from this flower to this leaf and that kind of thing and I've sort of addressed all of that and some of these I did by I would make a mark with this Posca and then take my finger and rub it that was a really nice easy way to do it rather than having to paint or whatever um, but you're I, I like the way you're or highlights well Actually, it is a little dark right in here, and and actually, <laughs> actually, that's not a bad suggestion because this flower is very bright, and these two are kind of bright. These two are kind of dark, and I could come in with this color, this turquoise and this orange, and lighten and brighten those up just a smidge. But it's still not quite what I'm looking for. Ladybugs? How did you know? <laughs> You're so great, Carol. Well, no. Um, now, if you want one, I could I could do one. We could put it like right here, maybe, <laughs> or we could have a line of them going across the table, and they could they could go up the jar, right? <laughs> okay. Let me move this glue. I can't I can't see what I'm doing. Okay. Um, Deb says, "Oh, bring stems down." That's it. That is it. The, there's no stems in the water. These flowers stop here, so I need to incorporate the stems that are in the vase. You see what see what I'm getting at there? Thank you, Deb. Yay! Um, thank you, Carol. Thank you both. Um, so part of my oh little hesitation with this is these stems were put in the day we first glued down all of the flower parts and pieces, and now. Oh, what did I do? Oh, I got water on that. Oops. Don't want to do that. So these stems are going to be different from these stems that I'm going to put in. So um, the problem is, and the thing I need to be careful about, is I've got layer on layer on layer on layer of paper and matte heavy gel medium and all this stuff. So... If you look at these stems up really closely, the black marks are so far away from the initial piece that I put down for the stem, it almost looks like there's water in between or ice or something. It's like 3D. And I really don't want these stems that I'm gonna put inside the jar to look like they're on top of the jar. I have to be very, very careful to keep them subtle and very faint and make sure that they are they look like they're inside the jar, not the last thing I stuck on there. So um, that's going to be the, let's see. Oh, there we go. Trying to get the chat to work. Okay. So that's the deal. And I thought in, in doing that, we could have a conversation about how this is done. Because you know, if you think about it, when you look at a vase of flowers, be below the water line, everything, a stem or whatever, gets it gets magnified and shifted a little. You know, and that's one of those tricks of looking through a glass of water. And I wanted to, I made this to sort of give us a way to discuss how to do these stems. And this will be like a practice run for me, and then we'll incorporate them into the sheet. So... I want to get my, I'm just going to use my, my little marker here. So what I'm going to do is make a decision right now. I'm going to shift everything down and to the left. So this stem 
is going to actually be like I and as a rule of thumb typically when I do this I will I'll come right about down here this stem is going to be now and, and it's curving this way so I want to continue that curve it's going to be like this okay and I could even magnify it I could make it a little bigger gotta be careful though because these are already pretty big okay any questions yet are we good okay this stem is in front of this one right here this one's on top so I want to do this one next and I'm going to come over here and it's going to come down I'll let it go a little further down and I, I may bring this down a little more too I don't know we'll sort of figure that out I could let this one come to the bottom actually okay that's good and now this one will also shift one over and it's sort of curved like it's kind of straight actually so it can go down like such okay so that's how we're going to shift and magnify to make them look like they should okay and what I'm going to do I'm not going to have a line here like this when I do it, I'm going to fade this out. I just wanted to draw it boldly so you could see what I'm talking about. So when I originally did the jar, one of the things I used was this, um, my Inktense ink pencils. And they're kind of neat because they're not like colored pencils and they're not like um, watercolor pencils. They're actually ink. Like, I painted with them all morning on a project, and I used a little cup of water. And when I got done, the water was still white. I mean, clear. It, was, it wasn't it was clouded at all. So these transfer very little color with your brush and everything. They're, it's very different than anything I've ever used. But what I want to do is pencil in where these are going to be, like I just did on that other piece of paper. And I've got to figure out... And see, I'm just going to do just a subtle like sort of like I'm coloring here this is a teal green and I'm gonna actually use teal green and I believe this is called yes leaf green I'm gonna use both of these just just to make this kind of happen and I'm trying again to make it look like it's inside the water this is so, this would be so easy to, um, this would be so easy to goof up now. And I just, I'm trying to be so careful. So I'm going to make them dark. And I'm going to come in with water and wet this. See, this is what you do. You, you draw with the ink and then you, um, then you wet it. If you want to, you don't have to. Okay, I'm gonna bring that down to right about there. I, I feel, well, it should go down to the bottom of the jar, don't you think? Okay, so there's one. Okay, now this one is the one that's in front here. And it's not gonna be perfect because none of this is perfect, but I do have to do these stems so that they show up um, and it makes sense because everything else is so realistic. I'm actually liking this leaf green better than the teal green. So I'm, I'm sticking with, with that. And I think we might get away with this. This is looking like it might work. Um, okay. And now this one shift over okay so it's going to come down kind of like this I'll, I'll let that one go behind it's curved a bit and i'm magnifying making it a little bit bigger not too much just a little and it's going to go down behind now i'm going to try this i don't know if this will work or not i'm going to try and wet this with a brush see how it does if i don't like it i can wet it and then you know dab it up um to see how and i put just a little teal right down in here and on the edge 
just want to give it a smidge just to darken it a little because I do have these black lines here and I may have to actually put some paint over those because I don't want people to look and say oh I can see right through the stem that's not going to work okay I'm okay with that now let's let's wet a brush and see what happens okay are y'all still there I'm not getting any more comments. Are y'all just being quiet or did I, is my screen messed up? Can somebody just type in something so that I know I haven't shut us down? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I'm using clean water and a paper towel here and I'm just gonna, I've wet my brush and I'm just touching the napkin. That brush has got, I think some paint in it still. All right, so let's wet this now and see what it does. There's a lot of teal in that because that was the first thing I used. You know, the ink pencils are water activated. I do think I'm gonna have to put something, some kind of paint right here because I don't, I can see through the stem. Okay. Let's see here. I'm going to reload my video because I'm not seeing comments. I'm still not seeing. You know, Facebook just changed a bunch of stuff and I'm not happy. It's just really hard to work. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay. There's Mert. Okay. I'm seeing Mert's comment. All good. Thank you. How are you, Mert? <laughs> Deb, we're a Okay. Well, thank you, Deb. I just, I can't see any comments. I'm, tr I'm trying to understand what changes they've made that would change my experience on this end. Because I get used to it being a certain way. And then, yeah, it's showing me, the last comment it's showing me is Deb's. It says, bring stems down. And it's made my video about two inches tall, so... Okay, Carol says it does make more sense now. Deb, thank you, Carol. Okay, no, no, we are mad. Okay, all right, thank you. I, you know, I don't know. I just don't know. I don't think I shifted this stem over enough. I think it may need to be shifted over a little bit more. I'm going to pick up some paint and push it over. All right. And you know what I'm going to do is wet this and, and I'm going to pull it up. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to get in here with some paint. Or, I don't know. What do y'all think? They're kind of there. I don't want them to get too dark. Hmm. I'm going to use a little bit of this craft black and I'm just going to come on. The gods have other plans. No. Okay, maybe not craft black. Someone's trying to tell me something. Let's use the black pencil. Black. There we go. I'm just going to darken these parts that are near the black here. And then shadow this one because it's behind the other one. You see what I'm doing there? It's kind of a shadow thing. And I may have to still come back with paint, but we'll, I'll do this, and then we'll take a survey and talk to y'all, and you can tell me what, um, what you think. Still just really not happy with whatever Facebook's doing. Jeez. 
Mm. Yeah, about time I get it figured out and they go, oh, she's getting too comfortable. Let's mess it up. <laughs> <sighs> okay. All right, so here's the black. That's nice. See what that does? It ties in with this black. And I can even put some of this right here if I want. I can darken that. And that may be a little too dark, but we'll see. Dab up a little. Yeah. So, thoughts, anybody, input, critique, suggestions, good, bad, ugly, okay, not okay, what would you do? I think I can leave it pretty much just like that and then add a little bit of white to make this on the jar, like cover, cover it with just a little bit of this pale green or white. And I think that that will finish it up nicely. Oh, you know what? I always have trouble opening these after they've sat for a day or two. Um, okay, so... What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some of this down, some of this ink. And a paper towel is not the thing. What am I thinking? Okay, let's do this. Let's put some of this down. And maybe a little of this. This is the leaf green. I'm going to put a little white down. Not much. Just enough to water it down and do a little something with. Okay. So now, water. Watered down white. Some of this color. See? See what I got there? That's the wrong brush, though. Okay, now. Mm, let's use this brush. Let's try it. Let's get some of this up. Okay, and see, this will make marks like, like those. And I can just put a little shine on here. And that's all I need to do, really, to make it look like the stems are behind the glass. Does that make, I hope that makes sense. I hope y'all get what I'm doing. Yep. Okay. I feel like I accomplished what I needed to. Okay. So our stems are there. They're shuttered to the left, they're magnified, they're, they're not bad. We'll bring this shine up here. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Okay. Hmm. Da -da. Looking for comments and stuff again. Hmm. Sorry. 
sorry just trying to like I said they've changed it on me so I'm like ah! okay ah now I think we're okay it's still not showing me any comments okay so I don't know I can see the video now but now I can't see any comments so yay Facebook okay <clears throat> so now what I'm gonna do is let this dry a little bit and I have to I, I kind of liked the uh, Carol's comment about putting in a few highlights and I actually could use this that I just did to highlight these flowers that worked fairly well let's do it again and and y'all I can't see your comments so I don't know um <laughs> sorry so I can put a little light turquoise there see what that does and I'm just rubbing it with my finger a little bit that'll just highlight that a little bit a little bit there That just brings that up just a smidge. I don't want to cover up my pattern because I really like the orange and turquoise uh, sort of a tie-dye look that I got. But I do like this little bit of added highlight there. That helps that a little bit. Okay. Um, also, I'm going to put a little marigold down and put, put just a few little tiny highlights on these little yellow flowers and we're so, we're really close to being done. Not way too much yellow, only takes a smidge. Okay, so these little buttercups that I inserted in here, I'm going to come along the top and just make a little a little pass with a little light yellow. And that just brings them up just, just a little bit. When you add highlight to things, it, it just adds more dimension. And it just helps everything along. Okay. And I want to put just a little yellow on this petal right here because it disappears right there. That's the way the paper was that I had decorated and used, but I just, that was just a little too dark. It looked like the petal was cut off. So there's a little, a little yellow. I'm going to sort of match that so you won't know, maybe. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. And still, I need some more orange on that. That is not very happy. And, um, let's see. Gonna put a little, little bit of red on there. It never takes much because, there we go. The darker color usually just takes over. Okay. I'm going to go in here and just sort of touch my orange up. I'm not going to change the location of it or, you know, I'm just going to add a little bit of brightness to it so you can see that it's orange. Because it was, the paper was very pretty. And as we added more paint and more glue and more, you know, and glued it down and whatnot, it got kind of dark. And I don't want to lose that pretty orange and teal. I just thought it was so pretty. That's a little better. A little bit more orange. Okay, let's see here. A little bit here. A little dabble do ya. See how that's just 
it's more definitive. You can tell, okay, that's orange that's over there with that turquoise. It's almost this whole petal is orange. And that's what's fun about this mixed media stuff. You can paint over stuff. You can layer stuff. You can just have a ball. Doesn't that look a little bit brighter? A little bit better? Put some white in there. There we go. There's our orange. Like it was when we started. Not quite so dark. Don't you think that looks a little bit brighter and happier? Just happy little flowers. like Bob Ross. You're in charge of these flowers. These are your flowers. It's your world. You can do it any way you want. <laughs> right? Okay. I can't stand this not being able to see you guys. Oh, there's Johnny. Good morning, Johnny. Okay. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. It makes sense. Looks great. Carol says loving it. Okay. See, I couldn't see all those. And now I can see, wow. Sorry, you guys, let me just, uh, one second. I'm going to throw my iPad across the room. <laughs> okay, let's, let's reload Facebook real quick. I'm just going to reload, okay. Back to the home page. Let's try again. It says we got six people in here. Love my peoples. Thank you for being here with me today. Okay. I might have I might have it now. Ah, oh, there you are. Okay, Mert, all good. Deb, thank you, Carol. Carol does make more sense. Deb looks good. Love you, man. Okay, haven't really Okay, I'm with you guys now. And hi to Johnny, who usually pops in. It's nice to see you. I'm surprised you're not out fishing today. Johnny's a fisherman, guys. That's a hobby. Okay, so we, we're, we're essentially done with this. Um, can y'all see or think of anything else that you would want to do to this, or would you call it done? What, how do y'all feel about it at this point? Do I need to put highlight on this purple? If, if I had gone in here with my Posca pen and done any, you know, marks like such, at this point, I would get my top secret glue and water out and take a brush kind of like this. And I would, without brushing real hard, you know, I would gently put some glue and water on wherever I had made Posca marks. But I think the last time I did Posca marks on this, um, I did put glue and water on top. And I have not put any more of the heavy matte gel medium. Hi, Diana. Deb says, I'm watching from Florida today. I think it's perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Diana, I need to call you. Mm. Carol says, frame it. Again, Deb, correct. Oh, you guys are sweet. Well, it's a, you know me, I like my container with flowers. I can't help myself. And I'm so glad we got Facebook loaded up right. God, sorry for all that. This is Liquitex Matte Super Heavy Gel. And you can see since last week, I've used quite a bit of this. <laughs> I've been working on a faux encaustic, um, trying to make artwork look like it's wax or encaustic but without the fumes and stuff and I've, I have used a lot of this but anyway this is not the brush I want for this I want to use 
I'm going to go ahead and put stuff on this. Um, the only thing we have to watch for is we don't, okay, where we put, when we use the ink tints pencils, this is ink, it's water soluble, it's water reactivated, okay? So if we're not careful when we put the stuff here, it could smear this a little bit. I ran into that with the leaves that we that I drew in. There was one, two, three leaves that I drew in with these. And when I went to put the glue and water on, I went, uh-oh, I forgot about that. So um, can you show us the faux encaustic, please, when you're ready? Yeah, I can show it to you today when I'm done with this. I'm not finished with it. It's still in process, but it's many, 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 many layers of this. But I have one, that, uh, one or two that are far enough along that you can see. I'll be glad to show you. Sure. So I'm going to, um, and the reason I'm using the heavy matte gel on this at this point is because it gives it a depth that I really like. And I mean, I could do that or I could seal it either way. I could just seal it. I mean, it's got a lot of depth already now that I think about it. Her. You know, now that I think about it, <laughs> this is what happens too. This is a, I'm like, well, I do have a lot of depth already, but, uh, what, what do I, what do, what do I do? Um, and I'll, I'll say this too, at this point, if you wanted to, if you have, um, stencils, I just happen to have mine right here um you could even at this point put a stencil up here and make wallpaper behind this or you could leave it the way it is i just changed completely from sealing it to doing something else to it what do you guys think do we want wallpaper or no this is my o velocity stencil from stencil girl I'll let you guys decide. I'm indifferent, I think. I'm like, I don't know, if you would quit talking sooner, you just skip the wallpaper. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Okay, now everybody's... What colors? Um, I would probably use a color like this yellow only like maybe a let me show you i quit talking and just show you uh first i have to find it there it is sort of this very very muted so it's a similar color only the design is just slightly there you know it's not going to like jump out at you it's going to be similar to this color i might even add a little um, white to this just to keep it from being too too different from this yellow oh, Carol says ooh wallpaper you like that idea Carol and I could show you how I mean that would be another technique you could learn because this is nice but it's very basic table, vase, flowers you know what do you think I think I'm going to put lid on this, and we're going to do some wallpaper. What you think? Because who doesn't need wallpaper? This brush is so full of glue and stuff that it, I can't even bend it. Subtle wallpaper, yes. Okay. I'm in agreement. Let's do this thing. So I'm going to put a little of this down. Sort of a goldy... Well, let me just let me not say sort of a goldy whatever. Let me tell you what it is. It's Holbein matte, which is <gasps> I love Holbein paint. This is yellow ochre, O O C H R E, yellow ochre, and this is my Holbein titanium white, which I need to crimp. This is a mess. Okay. So let's add a little white down here. Yes to Carol, subtle, yes. Okay, that's probably more paint than I need. Guilty, 
I saw somewhere once he said, paint like you're a millionaire. I'm like, already there. <laughs> I'm already there. I already do that. Okay, the reason I'm looking for my old brushes that are kind of rigid is... Uh-oh, that one's loose. I was thinking about when I do this, maybe I could sort of... If it's somewhat rigid, then this, this becomes easy to do. Or I could pounce even. You know, I don't necessarily have a pouncer. I've never needed one. I've always just, you know. Now, I have this brush, and I have these brushes. This is like a makeup brush. And that's an, this is another way to do it, which actually, actually might be the way to go. Maybe, yes. So... Let me get a palette knife and let's move this paint over because we don't need that much. And let me make a color here that is kind of like, see I'm just using an old lid y'all, sorry. This is not fancy or formal, it's just whatever works. I think about that color. It's almost the same color, but you know what? Paint always dries darker. It always dries darker. That's why the people at the paint store always dry the paint and, you know, put a thumbprint of it on the lid and, and dry it because it's going to always dry just a little darker. And you can't tell until you get home if they don't dry it for you. So I'm going to grab a baby wipe, and what I'm going to do is make a mark over here. Okay, so see see how that is? It's just a little darker. It might need to be a little more darker, don't you think? And see, I just wiped that off. I just wanted to see what it looked like, and now I feel like, okay, I need just a little more of this. And here I thought I didn't have enough. I thought I had too much. So let's do just a little more. This is so much fun, y'all. I just love doing this stuff. Okay, let's mix this up some more. I'm just pushing it back and forth. Okay. That looks pretty good. Same thing. Okay, baby wipe. Here we go. Oh, yeah. That's... I think that's nice, don't you? Okay. All right. Take it off. You wouldn't want to do that too many times, but once or twice, you know, you can sort of get away with that. Okay, now I don't want this to be a real wet thing. I want it to be sort of a, a dry um, stencil thing. So I'm going to put this here. Uh, Deb says I'm learning so much from you. Oh, thank you, Deb. I appreciate that. Um, I love to share. I just love, you know, getting other people to, to paint and do stuff that maybe they're afraid to do. And I like to get them over that. And I'm just going to, look, I'm just taping this paper towel down so it won't move on me. Because that's something that just will make me crazy. So this is going to be a sort of a dry brush technique. And um, what I'm going to do is put this design like off the edge a little bit. Something like that. Maybe I should line up these lines with my table. There we go. So, and then what I'll do, I think this will work, is when we're done, I think I can flip it, and and this will match. If this oval is here, I can flip it, and we can continue on. And I think that will work. Okay. Carol, love that stencil. I do too. Thank you. I'm so proud of these. I'd like to make more. Okay, so I think, and you know, I probably, you know, you learn after a while, right? You, you kind of, you're like, okay, uh -uh. I need to take this stuff down because it's going to travel and I can't, I can't handle it. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to, oh, 
Let's see. Dur, dur, dur. I've taped the painting a little bit here and I'm just going to tape that stencil down over there. Move this towel. There we go. That should work. I just don't want it to walk on me. Yes, thanks, Deb. I yeah, I did some stencil designs and submitted them to Stencil Girl, and they they accepted them and released them in September. I have three of them. Um, this is called O Velocity for O Ovalocity, but they couldn't. People messed it up, so I titled it O Velocity, but it's really Oval Velocity. Get it? <laughs> and waterfall and. Dragonfly. This is doo -doo -doo -doo. this is waterfall, and this is dragonfly. So, anyway, it's all a learning thing, right? There was a lot of it was a lot of fun to do, but it's a learning. They are at uh, yes, they are at Florence Thomas. Actually, they're selling some. Yeah, you can get those there. I, I was there yesterday and just happened to see. Two of them anyway. I'm going to assume she's got all three. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, this, this is dry brushing with a makeup brush, which is kind of funny. I'm going to get some paint on here, and then I'm going to do this. I'm going to come over here and squish it, and I'm going to get most of it out. Okay, and I've got everything in place now. I'm just going to kind of rub this around. I don't know if this will work or not. Um, the dry brush may not work. It's feeling like it's resisting. I'll do a little bit and we'll pull it up and look. Let's take a look real quick. Uh, yeah, I mean, what do y'all think? I think that's actually probably okay. That's about all I wanted was just a little hint of pattern, right? Okay. Well, it looks better than I thought it would. How about that? Okay, so we'll just, I just don't think I can do the dry brush. I think it's going to want to be paint. I think I'm going to need to just do this. Instead of trying to swish this around, I think I'm going to have to just dab and actually literally paint I'll get rid of the excess over there on the napkin and maybe it won't be too bad now I want to stencil paint my walls oh you know that's a that's a fun project but boy <laughs> you you get into it and you're like oh I'm so tired okay so now we I want to kind of mask We've got places here where, okay, I want to paint here, but there's leaves and things. So I'm just going to sort of put this tape there so I can come right here. See that? Oops. I accidentally did paint that. I'm trying to stay off of my stuff, but uh, also... You know, I want to get in there as close as I can, but I don't want to paint on my, on my little flowers and things. So you can, oh, thank you, Mert. So you can just put a little piece of, a little part of a piece of tape and just sort of roughly mask it. So you're just going to sort of protect those things from, and I may have some of this on my leaves and things when I'm done. I may have to go back and sort of, yeah, see, I just did that. I can go back and kind of maybe baby wipe some of that off. It shouldn't be too bad. Okay, so now we're going to flip this thing. Let's open it up and see how it looks first, and then we'll know what, what we're doing next. Woohoo! Fun, fun. Yeah! I like it. Oh, I forgot to do down here. Roofs. 
Okay. Let me do this part down here. Forgot, forgot. Okay. Coming in here, I'm gonna do this part. I would call this little old lady gold. <laughs> when we bought our house a long time ago, um, a lot of the house was this, this color gold. And the little lady we bought it from was like, you know, well, she was a, a cute, sweet little old lady. She loved her gold. Okay, so now, more whopping out. Okay, I flipped this over, and now I'm going to match this oval, hopefully, or something like it. No, I didn't flip it over. Wait. Okay. Do, 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 do. Right. Where was that? Okay, it was like that. So now, I had to get a visual on it. That doesn't really make sense, does it? Okay, so never mind. Seemed like a good idea at the time, but we can just make a... We'll just say, well, there's a seam there. It's okay. This piece is not that perfect. Hey, Bridget, how you doing? Really makes it pop the flowers and jar out. Oh. Bridget, we decided to add wallpaper to this before we seal it. And we're using, surprise, stencils to do it. And I'm going to mask this right here, this leaf and that leaf. That's a little, a little bit tighter than I want to try to do. There we go. I can usually drive fairly well, but I don't want to. I'm going to try and drive through there. Okay. I'm being as careful as I can. I think I went over the other stenciling I did. That's okay. Ain't nothing but thing. Okay. Okay. So now that's Let's get a baby wipe and clean up anything. Valda, that's a makeup brush from Dollar Tree. Look, I, I doubled over here. Let's see if I can take that off. Maybe not. And uh, Bridget's the one that told me about those. They are pretty handy dandy. Okay. I think this is okay. I don't really mind that it's double here. It's okay. What do you guys think? Are we glad we did wallpaper? I think I'm glad we did wallpaper. I think I'm liking that. Okay. Good deal. Well, now I can't seal this now because this needs to dry. But, um... If you try to do this at home, I want to tell you something I learned this week in doing this and several other pieces. Um, Carol's glad. Thank you. I appreciate your feedback because, um, you know, I sit here and do stuff, but I like having feedback. Um, and I like having y'all here to tell me, yeah, maybe not, or yeah, okay, or whatever. Um... This does get lighter over here, but it, it could be like this is where the light's coming from. Maybe that maybe it just is lighter because I do have a darker background color over here. So I'm just fine with it the way it is. And I'm going to let it ride. I would try to clean out some of this. I need to look at my leaves. Yeah. I've got some gold on my leaves. And you know... The leaves have been done for like a week. So I can come in here and wipe a little bit. And I'm not going to lose anything because they, they've been sitting here for a week curing. Now if I had just painted these leaves and then did this, 
I might have some trouble, you know, getting that. I might go in there and wipe. Like if I tried to wipe up around these stems right here, I probably would wipe them all away because I just put it down. But because these leaves were done like a week ago, I can pretty safely come in here and just sort of clean up these little edges. Y'all buy stocking baby wipes, okay? I'm telling you. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So there's that. I'll seal it and I'll put it up on uh, the Kelly's Color Studio thing and in the group for my Patreon people a little later. I think I'm. I think I will stop here other than sealing it, and I will seal it with either the Liquitex Acrylic Medium Satin Varnish or Joe's Prime Really Good Satin Varnish. This is, I kind of like Joe's because it's uh, thicker. It's thicker and I can put it on and it doesn't smear things as much as this. If there's a chance of anything smearing, I probably would use this instead. Okay. Now, adds a lot of dimension, I think. I think this is, well, I'm going to keep it for a day or two and look at it. What do y'all think? Just just sort of take a look at it. We'll just sort of, you know, check back with it in a day or so and see how we feel about it. So, okay. All right, so there's that. Now, I had told you, Bridget Sherry says this is her most favorite painting. Really? Aww. That's so sweet. You know what's fun? I don't know if I can hold it so you can see. I'm going to try and hold it so you can see. If I angle things towards the window and hold it close to the camera, maybe you can see the texture from the flowers. Um, Because they're just laying right on top. And they're so dimensional that you can almost see the cutouts. And the. it's like you can reach out and pick one. Can you, let me arch it out a little bit. Let's see. I'm looking at the screen, seeing what I'm showing you guys. <laughs> seeing if that, maybe more flowers. There we go. Maybe that. Yeah. That might show you more. Anyway. Um, yeah, that's, that's probably about as good as you're going to get for seeing unless I do straight up and down. But anyway, it's it's so textural when I rub my hands over it, like these are raised up. This is watercolor paper glued onto watercolor paper, so this is thick. And you can feel these thick ones, you know. It's pretty neat. Um, love how this turned out. Frame it. <laughs> sell it. <laughs> I'm going to sell it is what I'm going to do. I don't frame anything. I'll sell it all. Um, now I've talked long enough that this is actually dry. Blah, blah, blah. Mwah, 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 mwah. Okay. Yep, it's dry. That's why I love acrylics. Okay. Here we go. Let's seal it real quick. And then I'll show you the, the faux encaustic that I've got going on. Now I've used this side about all I'm going to use it. Now I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to use the top, and I think I can put that in the trash when I'm done. I think that lid will have served its purpose. So, I'm going to go here first, because this is what I'm worried about smearing. No, it's not sold yet. Um, and I'm going to, okay, see, I put this down where that stuff is new and I'm trying not to go back to it until this dries and this stuff will dry quickly and I can come back in a minute and do you know more and I won't smear that that Derwent ink okay so I'm going to come up here and usually when I seal something I do it in sections like quarters or thirds or whatever I will typically go the short way and sort of do like this and go back and forth um, because you want to paint your put your stuff down like this okay and then 
come over here and do it and you want to connect this wet part to that wet part before anything dries um, and that way number one you don't miss places and number two Just making sure nobody's smearing there. And number two, it will um, it'll look better if you connect wet to wet as you go, because otherwise you get if you try to paint on a something that's already drying and it's already kind of tacky, then you get globs and clumps, and you don't want that. So I really like sort of doing a a pattern and connecting wet to wet and keeping moving it keeps me on track keeps me on target and um, gets the job done I'm just basically trying not to leave any hills or bumps I do have with all these things that are stuck on there are a lot of nooks and crannies that most people don't have when they seal a painting so this has quite a few of those now, if this decided to smear, can you imagine this black smearing out onto this gold wallpaper we just made? Wouldn't that be a horrific thing to have to clean up, you know? Okay, so now here's where we were before. Boy, I just, once you, once you seal a painting, man, it just, mm -hmm. I like it so far. And this is truly mixed media. We've got fabric, tissue paper, watercolor paper, acrylic, Posca pen, um, ink. What else? I mean, oh, we've got, um, what else did I use on this? We've got a lot of stuff in this. But I'm I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, now I'm gonna redo this jar because it's it's getting dry. And I'm not gonna again I'm not gonna brush it to death. I look it smeared right there. See? The stems did smear a little bit, but that's okay. Because this is a glass jar and I kind of like you know, it's a glass jar with water, so I'm okay with that. What I have to watch is now coming down here, because look, this is probably, yeah, see how that's green? You got to watch for that stuff. So, it's not a hard fix. Just get the paper towel and paint it out. You can dip in water and do a little bit more. It's pretty clean. That'll be okay. So we'll just finish this last little section and it'll be it'll be finished. Okay. Alright, so this is I'm holding it up against the light looking for shimmer to see if I left any uh, bald spots or places. I think I got everything. And that's what you know going in a pattern does. It helps you do that. Okay, I was I started to say earlier, hi Kendall, how are you? Thank you. I started to say earlier, if you decide to try this, um, what you want to do is, this is what I do. I have an 11 by 15 pad of watercolor paper, Canson watercolor paper. And before you even consider putting anything on it what you want to do is lay it down here and get some of that heavy gel medium on it because if you don't I'll show you what happened and this has been one of my big learning curves this week um, just one second let me grab this real quick Okay. okay, so 
this is a piece of, and it is cardstock, but it's a piece that I did not, when I worked on the other side, I did not initially coat it with the heavy matte gel medium. And consequently, can you see how it's all buckled and bumpy? That's what the watercolor paper will do too. Okay, so if you coat your paper first with the heavy matte gel medium, and here's one I did this past week. When you're done, it's real smooth. It's almost like a piece of floor cloth or leather. It feels, it's got, it's a little bit weighted and it feels, you know, it's not buckled and, and puckered. Um, and I like, I like the way this feels. It's, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty smooth. It's pretty happy and it's, uh, it's doing what I want it to do. And I finished this one with the, the heavy gel medium too. Um, so it's just, this one's happy. This is, this is the finish I like. So just so you know that. Um, now the faux encaustic, that's what I'm practicing with here. So I took some of this tissue paper that, that we, you know, we tie dyed, stacked and tie dyed tissue paper a couple weeks ago. And of course I've done it so much, I have a complete folder of it. And I was thinking what fun it would be to, to do this kind of a thing. And I may later, like even just tear this and put it into a big collage or something. But I just wanted to experiment. And this is my Posca pen. Remember this little guy? And it splats and makes little, little it, you know, little sprays and, and marks and stuff. And I like that look for this. Now, sometimes I don't want that look, but this is... I like what it did for me with that. So, um, mixed emotions on this, trying to sort of figure it out. This was, it looks sort of encaustic E, is that a word? Um, but I don't have enough layers on it yet. It's in process still. And again, this may get cut up later, but I'm just seeing how the paper reacts, seeing how the, the tissue paper reacts. I'm you know, flatten it out to see how it responds. And like I said, I may, if I'm do, I want to do, start doing collages using this stuff on like three and four foot canvases that are ginormous. And, and this may be just the thing I need to tear in half and put, you know, like half of this or, you know, I don't know, but I'm, I'm pre-making all these little papers so that when I do my big collage, I can just say, oh, what do I want to put on here? I'm going to put this or that. Um, this is not the best one. This is like the worst one. This is, um, these two to me are the best. Now here's one. This thing is so smooth and so pretty. All I want to do is feel it. And it, it's, it's got lots and lots of layers on it. And it's starting to look very much like a, like an encaustic to me. Um, when I hold it like this, you probably can't see many lines on the surface. It's very... I can't tell what, what you're seeing here. Let's see. Uh, I don't know if that will help. Maybe. Mm. Yeah. See how smooth it is? And there's a piece of tissue paper in there that's under. You can't feel the edge. It's got so much of that um, super heavy matte gel matte super heavy gel whatever that it is all all of that tissue paper is down in those layers it's at the very beginning and i've put layer over layer over layer and now when i come in and paint on this with the posca pen or paint or whatever i'm going to do um this will look like it's underwater it's going to have a lot of depth um oh good question mert thank you how did you apply the heavy gel? <laughs> the Betty Crocker <laughs> cake froster thing. And I just see how it's it's angled right here. This little angle. It's a it's a straight edge. I didn't use the curved edge. I used the, the straight edge. And I just angled it um, like this. And that's what I did. And just have something under here that doesn't matter. And you may even want to tape these down because God, this, this, it's so hard to do because you're holding it and it's sticking to your fingers and you're trying to do this and get it smooth and then you're, you know, then you got to do this and you could, you play around with it. Next thing you know, it's all here 
and you don't have much on here. So you have to go back. <laughs> Is that a doll she find? I, you know, Murda, I think this was my brother's. I'm not sure where he got it. It could very well be a, a, a doll 25 tree find. <laughs> Gonna go down and get me some smoky eye. <laughs> oh, doll tree. Doll gentle. No, it, it could be. Um, <laughs> sorry. I don't get out much, you guys. I'm just sort of, you know, lose my mind in here. But yeah, and there's a lot of stuff like this that you can use. Um... And you, yeah, when you're in a store like that, walk around and look at the kitchen stuff. And you just never know what you can find. Even placemats you can use to stencil with and do stuff. But this, to me, because the tissue paper bled and ran into the, the goop. See how that, see how that did? This, to me, just makes me so happy. And the thing about encaustic is you can't really touch it because it's wax. And you touch people's. Everyone wants to touch it, so they touch it, and then there's a fingerprint in it. This, you can beat to death, and it's fine. Now, here's another one. I took, well, I should tell you, to do both of these, I mixed the heavy matte gel medium with some Liquitex. I had a little tube of this. Uh, do you to do... Titan Ecru beige, basically. And I just mixed the uh, heavy matte gel medium with a little of this. Mostly gel medium. This only tinted it, and it made it beige, which is the milky look like encaustics have. Um, and um, there's a little more of it in here, as you can see. This is a little more beige, and this is a little more white. Um, both of these are on watercolor paper, and both of these I put the uh, I put this on first, and this is what keeps these smooth and keeps them from buckling and getting all warbly. Okay. Um, now what I want to do with this, this is also an experiment, and if it works here, I'm going to do it on a big canvas. Um, I want to take um, probably flat black. Or, I have a couple of favorite colors going right now to play with. One of these guys, or black, and, and sort of maybe take a big brush and go loosely. But you still will see this, some of this. Some of this will be covered. I don't know how much. I don't know how far in I want to come. Or if I want to sit and do it with a detailed brush. But I've got maybe five layers of of matte super heavy gel on top of this and what I'm doing at this point is taking my well it's not the, well yeah it is this one I have a palette knife like this it's long and I'm putting stuff on like this right here and just getting it as smooth as I can if I have to use this I'll go back because one pass does it but um, the tissue paper that's in there, and that, again, is some of this tie-dyed. That was the orange. And it's the same paper that we put on these flowers. It's turquoise and orange. Okay. And this has probably got, like I said, five layers of, of stuff on it. And so it doesn't look like it now. But if I were to take my Posca pen any of my Posca pens or any paint or anything right now and paint around this where the edges of what I put on meets this, it will make this look like it's about three feet of water. It'll give it a lot of depth and dimension and it, you look at it and you, it's the kind of thing people want to pick up and go, oh, and then they want to touch it. And I had the um, gallery director tell me, people were touching your art the other night and I told them stop. And I said, no, 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 no. Because to me, I want people to want to touch my art. Because if someone is compelled to touch it, then that means it speaks to them somehow. Or they're curious, or they need to know, or they want to know more about it. And that's what makes me really, really, really happy. That someone, instead of just walking by and going, huh, okay, you know, 
that they're stopping and they're looking at it and they're going, ooh, you know, so that, that to me is a high compliment and that's what I like. So, um, okay, so here's one that I've just, I had some extra paint on my palette and just threw all this down here. This is not finished. It's not for sale. It's not anything. It's just, this does not have the matte super heavy gel on it. I just painted on paper and, and well, <laughs> okay. I also use this for some other stuff. Okay. But, um, I don't know if you can see, can you see how warped that is? How bent up and warped it is compared to the other one. I don't even know where I put the other one. Good grief. A tisket, a tasket. A green and yellow basket. I lost it. I lost it. Okay. Oh, right there. If it was a snake. Okay, so you see the difference between these two? This has more body. This is sort of... And this is warped and, and bubbled and, and bent. And see how the edges are curled right there? See that? So, yeah, this is, this is a great way to start, and I know some people start with gesso and stuff, but I like a painting where I look at the canvas or whatever. If I paint on a canvas, I don't want to see or feel any of the canvas threads when I'm done. I want, I want it to be completely, okay, I don't think you can see any canvas thread on this. This is all paper and paint and goop. And it's a canvas, but, but there's no, it's all my stuff. And there's no canvas texture available. And that's what, and it's about a 10 pound painting. I got, I probably got a half a jar of this stuff on here. And when you look at this real closely, you can see down in there. It, it does look like the last marks I made are floating on top of a clear surface. So that's pretty cool. And this is a technique that I'm crazy over. And I've been doing it for a long time and I can't stop. So, um, I would love, if you guys do this, I would love it if you would share with me what you make and let me see. I don't know if anyone else wants to try the faux encaustic. Um, I have a friend that lives in Chapel Hill and we've been sending each other pictures of our attempts to do this. And, um, it's been a lot of fun. Like, it's a challenge, like you're over there and I'm over here, but... I'm going to do this today. Okay, well, I'm going to try it too. And we'll share later, you know. So that's really fun. That's really, really fun. So, um, and this could be a whole nother. If you want me to do this one day, um, uh, you want to do this next week, I could I could show you how to start it and how to spread it and what, how to, I would do a small one maybe like this. Uh, would you guys have an interest in that? If you would, just shoot me a message or let me know. Um, because I, I haven't decided yet for next Friday. Okay, Deb says, I love the phone caustic and we'll try it for sure. Um, Mert, yes. Okay, was that was that for doing it next week? Was that your response? I can't. Uh, Bridget says that would be awesome. Okay. Um, there's a gal in Raleigh, who's at, I think it's Art Space, and I bet I'm not going to be able to think of her name right now. She does encaustic, and I love her encaustic stuff because it's, some of it's used to be years ago anyway, it was creamy, milky looking, and she had tiny little pieces of fabric with strings, and she had little, she had a little pen, kind of like my black pen, and she made the tiniest little marks, and you just looked at it, and it just pulled you in. Um, Anna Padres is her name, and I don't know if she's still doing encaustics, but if you can find her online or somewhere, I know she's on Facebook, Anna Padres, P-O-D-R-I-S, her encaustics were the first ones that ever pulled me in and made me love these little black lines and the depth and the, you know, just the detail and the, um, if she's still doing them, I bet they're fabulous now. I haven't looked in a while, but she's very talented. So, um, 
if you want inspiration, or you you don't even have to look at hers. You could go, just go to Instagram or Pinterest or somewhere and type in encaustic art or whatever, and get a get an idea of what it looks like, so you'll understand what you're shooting for. Because again, intent, okay, intent is really important. Um, it's half the battle because you got to know what direction you're pointed, or you're just willy nilly going everywhere and it'll never succeed you gotta i mean yeah you do need to sit down sometimes and just cut loose and do art but if you're doing a project and you have intent and you have goals then you give yourself a chance to succeed and to reach your goal and when you're done you go ah, i did it <laughs> and that's a feather in your cap so that's that that really um encourages you and builds you up and you learn a lot when you you know, and it's a positive experience when you set a goal and you reach it or you do it. Like I'm so happy with this. I've been I've been walking around with it. I took it to the kitchen with me the other day. And I just sat after dinner and I just sat and I just want to rub it and look at it. <laughs> I don't know. I may need to up my medication or something. I don't know. But anyway, okay. Well, we've been at this for an hour and forty minutes, just about. So I should scoot. Um, I do talk a lot. Uh. And I just want to thank you all for being here and staying with me. And um, you're all so sweet. And I love your questions and your encouragement. And I like our, I like our uh, wallpaper. Now, now see, and I put, I put the stuff on this, and it's it's a little bit warbly right now, but it might be because I just put all the stuff on it. So maybe as it dries, it will settle down and and this may be another reason for me to put some more of this on it okay i may do another coat of that and then seal it again it can't hurt anything but i want to thank you all for your input with the wallpaper and stuff um let's see mert says looks like she and her husband are at city market artist collective in downtown raleigh okay they were at art space years ago probably 12 years ago and i i just i've lost touch i you know but yeah, she and her husband are both very talented and very fun. They're fun art. Um, so check them out if you want to. Can't think of her husband's name either. I can see him, but I can't think of his name. Deb says, thanks, Kelly. Love everything you do. Deb, you're so kind. Thank you. Mert, great demo this week. Thank you, Mert. I'm, I'm, I feel honored coming from you because I know you do a lot of art. So, And I'm just so glad you're here. Um, Mert says, before you go, are they... Bendable. I'm thinking book covers. <laughs> you know, Mert, I, I was talking, went, went to Open Studio yesterday at Florence Thomas, and we were talking about that. And someone said, oh, you could turn these into pocketbooks. You could, they're so pliable, you could put zippers in them. I said, no, I don't, they, they are, after all, just paper. So I don't think they would hold up to that. But I was thinking, a journal cover or something? Can you imagine this as a, what a great journal cover that would be. Um, I, if, and I was thinking about this just yesterday, so it's so funny you should ask. If I were going to make something like this for a journal co cover, I would either make this the size I wanted and put it on there, or I would, like, if you wanted this to be the front and the back, I would, I don't know how this is going to do if you bend it now. That's what I'm trying to say. So, like, if I were to do this, I think I would have it. I think I, this would be a problem. It would be uneven. It might crack and split. I don't I don't know what it would do. It's probably not that forgiving when you try to bend it. Now, unless you wanted to, like, before you start, with when your paper's blank, score it, fold it, and get it, get it going, you know, get it to, to acknowledge that fold before you do any of this. And then when you do this kind of thing, just stop short of that. So the paper can fold and flex. Um, that might work. Deb says, have you ever used Tyvek? Uh, is that the stuff that doesn't really want to tear? They used to use for, for priority postage envelopes, right? Isn't that what that is? I have a friend that uses that a lot. I've never really been, if that's what it is, I can't remember. I'm, I'm not that, yeah, I'm not that compelled to use it, but I, what do you use it for? Do you make journal covers and stuff with it? Or, um, my, my friend V will 
crumble it up and crunch it and then she'll take some um oh who's the guy that sells all the um tim holtz she'll do the tim holtz uh little stamp pads and she'll distress it and stuff and it's it's wrinkly but it's got all the it looks like old crumpled up paper and she makes some really handsome uh greeting cards with that as a back as a background and stuff but um I haven't used it, but I think it could work. Well, it's kind of thin. I think it would be basically bulletproof, but I don't think it would have much substance. I think it would be kind of like, well, I think it would be kind of like this is, you know, just kind of flopsy-mopsy. I think it would need some kind of a substrate or something behind it to, to enforce it or encourage it to hold together. Um, but yeah, look, if you do that, um, please share. Let us know what you've what you've done, and, and we I'd love to see. I'm sure everyone else would too. So, um, okay. Well, if there aren't any other questions or comments, I guess I'll scoot. Um, we'll, we'll do the faux encaustic next Friday at 10 a.m. And I'll have these to show you. Perhaps these will have progressed into something else. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. And look, I'm, I'm going to take a photo of, of these or something like these and advertise the demo like now instead of next Friday morning. <laughs> If y'all don't mind, if, if you would come back and check my page sometime today or tomorrow, and it, would you all share that link for that demo with your friends and stuff? I would really appreciate that. I think I think I need to get some more folks in here, and that's probably a good way to do it if you don't mind. I'll try and be on time for once, which is I'm terrible at. It's not, it's not with me. It's not if, it's when, okay? <laughs> All right. Love you guys so much. Appreciate you so much. Um, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, Deb. I appreciate that. Yeah, just share, 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 because I'm moving. I haven't told y'all I'm moving a lot of my, my older videos to YouTube. So after like after this one, I'll shift it over to YouTube as well. That's a little bit more coverage, and I'm trying to grow my audience. So it's a, it's a work in progress for sure. Have a great weekend. Talk to you guys later.